Stewart here from BM Pro Sydney and the Family Camper Van. Here to discuss uh, solar with you today so you can hopefully uh, get to use it, enjoy it and uh, stay off the grid as long as possible which is what we want at the end of the day. So uh, we'll go over a few features with our BM Pro range and then we'll move into uh, more of the technical side of it uh, as the talk goes on. So. With our J35 series, um, we've got our own style of regulator that is inbuilt into that unit. So it's neither MPPT or PWM. Um, it is a bit of a mixture of uh, the two. So we've seen it um, in some instances uh, outperform the likes of the uh, maximum power point trackers. Um, so yeah it is quite a good um little unit that is in the uh j35s uh it's got a maximum uh input of up to 28 amps charging so that's 450 watts that you can try and squeeze on the roof of your van then we move to our bp35 series introducing our bp35 mark ii we have Two units in the in the range with two different style regulators. We have our SR, which is using the basic PWM style, which is still a very effective solar charger. Um, it will definitely do your three stages of charging in your batteries and keeping your batteries topped right up. We then move into the BP35 Mark II HA, which is a high amp unit and actually comes standard with an inbuilt maximum power point tracking solar regulator. So what that means is that is going to maximize your solar panel to give you the maximum voltage coming straight down and current coming straight down and into your batteries. So there is two main panel styles that the industry tends to use and that's monocrystalline and polycrystalline. Both panels will work extremely well with the J35 and the BP35 range. Um, the predominant difference is the way that the panels are made. So the monocrystalline are made from a, to form the cell are made from a single um, crystal of silica versus the polycrystalline that tends to mash uh, silica fragments together to form the cells. So efficiency wise, it is led to believe that the monocrystalline is slightly more efficient therefore it's a lot dearer than the polycrystalline because the polycrystalline are cheaper to make so that is a bit of an overview on how the uh, the panels are formed there is various different brands out there on the market so I would say if you're looking to uh, add a panel to a new system or something like that you know definitely do your homework when we start to, to look at our panel performance and stuff like that and what we need, everyone's application is going to be different. Mine's going to be different to yours and so forth. So on this particular van, which we're, we're in our camper uh, here, uh, we've got one 160-watt panel up on the roof and that is more than ample for it to run this van. So we have a total of four lights within the main living area and a couple of outside lights. So, will we get the 150 watt, uh, 150, 160 wattage out of the panel? No, not really, because you've got to remember the panel is flat mounted onto the roof of the van. So, straight away we have a performance drop off of about 30%. So, where we might have thought that we were putting in 12, 13 amps, we're really only putting in about 8 amps. So, you know, if you're looking at purchasing a new camper or caravan or something of that nature, you really want to start looking at what your needs are to what the solar is, because you may find that you may need to option up your van with additional panels, which these two units can simply take in up to 450 watts, not a problem. So th there's a little bit of homework that you'll have to do in the background. So one of the questions we tend to get asked a lot is, can I add more solar to my system? Well, you can if the regulator itself will allow you to. So most regulators out there will go up as high as 30 amp uh, input or, or so. So 
yeah, if you've got two 150s up there, you should be able to add a, an additional panel. However, if we're adding a different size panel to the system, this can heavily impact the performance of our system. It is what we call dissimilar panels because they're not the same. They don't perform the same. So your system will then only be as good as the weakest link within the system. So if you can, try and match your panels just like we would our batteries. Batteries work the same way. If we're adding dissimilar batteries together, we're going to pull the system right down. Same with the solar. So try to keep it all the same if you can. One of the questions we tend to get a lot of emails on is, uh, can we add portable solar to our system? Yes, you can. Um, got to remember, when we start to get up into the tropics, things like that, we don't tend to park our vans out in the sun. We don't want to turn it into an oven or so forth. So we tend to park them in the shade and uh, we want to be able to use our portable panels that we've got. So one of the easiest way to be able to connect that up to your battery is with the use of a BC300 shunt and comlink. The comlink itself simply plugs into your J35 or your control node 103 or if you have the BP range that would be the Odyssey link 103. Um, the shunt then gets screwed to the top of the battery and becomes a new negative output for your system. You can then simply, if your uh, folding panel kit has an inbuilt regulator of uh, any nature, simply walk up and hook it direct to the battery terminals. Or if you're going to have it installed by your local dealer or auto elect, you can put an Anderson plug on the outside of your van so you can walk up and simply plug your panel in when you uh, would like to use it. So one of the questions we tend to get asked quite a lot is how do we know if our solar is charging? Well, it's quite simple. We can simply look at the J35 or the BP35. Both of them have an indication light to let us know exactly what our system is doing. Our indication light is just located here on the J35. So if we're seeing a double orange flash, that indicates that it's charging from solar. Double green would indicate that it's fully charged on solar. Our BP35 is exactly the same. Down here, we have the, the same flash code. So you will see a double orange flash to indicate that you were charging from solar or a double green flash to indicate that you are full from solar. So if you aren't seeing those lights flashing, there may be a problem between the panels on the roof and the units themselves. So you may need to get your hands on a multimeter if you're not seeing any power there. We do tend to get a, quite a lot of inquiries about uh, eBay panels or special panels that someone's seen uh, a solar installer selling, uh, you know, quite cheaply online. These sorts of panels need to be looked at quite carefully because you may find that one, they may have been in service for 10 or so years, and two, the, the voltages could be completely wrong. So you might find that these panels are are on sale are uh, 36 volt or even higher and are non-compliant with our systems so our systems have a maximum input of 25 volts um, and as low as uh, 17.5 so you really need to make sure that your uh, panels are well within those specs um, because yeah you don't want to cause damage to your system or your batteries one of the questions we tend to get asked a fair bit is if I've got portable solar panels do I need to use my regulator with it if I'm using a Mini Boost Pro or if I'm using the solar input on my J35? The answer is no. Both units have an inbuilt regulator, so we would ask that you remove them. If you're gonna run it into the solar input on the J35 or into the solar input of the Mini Boost Pro. The regulator is there if you're going to go direct to battery so via your BC300 shunt or direct battery depending on your setup within your own van.